Good morning. Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. It is Thursday, September the 5th, and we are here to look at the new releases that are being set free this week. Every day of the week, we look at a different genre. On Thursdays, we look at fantasy and science fiction. And there are a few, but I just noticed that my glasses are really... Blech. How does that happen? How does that even happen? I don't know. It's like they go out in the jungle and come back and go, Woo! Did I have an adventure? It's like, I was with you the entire time. I did not notice that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Quick announcements. Yes, I do have sprints tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. They go for two and a half hours. Bring your own book. Work on a project like I'm going to be crocheting um, or just close your eyes after a day and listen to the ambiance. That is OK. Um, let's see. Anything else? I had intended to do some extra sprints last night. Uh, but Keo had an uh, unexpected visit to the vet. He has uh, at least a bacterial infection. I'm thinking it is ringworm again, but they won't commit to that until they get their tests back in a week. Uh, but I did have to pick him up after work, and I took care of him. So it uh, those extra sprints didn't happen, but they could happen soon. Hi, Anita. Hope you are well. I hope you are well, too. I'm okay. Slept pretty okay. All right, so we are doing fantasy and science fiction today. But I did finish um, my second Spy versus Spy book, City Spies, City of the Dead, gave it five stars. Absolutely recommend that series for adults as well. It, it, and do the audiobook because it's fantastic. First up for fantasy and science fiction being released this week is the new one from David Weber and Richard Fox. I, this is one I was very much looking forward to. I have been looking forward to it for years because they wrote the book number one three years ago and I really, really liked it. And then it took three years to get book two. And last week I reread book one. I'm very glad I did. And so here it is, book two, Rebel or Rebel, whichever way we're using it. He never wanted to be a rebel. The 500, the elite families who ruled the Terran Federation, control its political power and its wealth, and they've grown steadily wealthier and more powerful thanks to the war against the Terran League. War may be hard on the people who get caught in its path, but it's very good for business in the short term, and the 500 own the shipyards that build the Navy's ships. They own virtually all the industry that produced the weapons and material the war consumes so voraciously, and they've made damn sure someone else does the dying. True, there are a few flies in the 500's ointment. There's a growing hatred and resentment of the fringe worlds whose children do 80% of the dying in the 500's war, which has been going on for 60 years. But the 500 have made sure the fringe knows what will happen to any system that goes out of compliance. There are the lunatic conspiracy nuts who insist that the alien Rishathan sphere is secretly aiding the League's military, but the 500 have forced them to keep their mouths shut where it matters. And then there's Terrence Murphy, a man of honor who loves the Federation, who springs from the 500, yet knows it for what it is and is determined to speak for its victims. But the 500 have dispatched ample force to deal with him and his handful of lunatic followers. Unfortunately, the French has paid enough of its children's lives and it no longer cares what may happen to it if it dares to defy the 500. Worse, the lunatic conspiracy nuts were right. And the Rish have planned carefully for the Federation's destruction. And worst of all, the 500 have fatally underestimated Terrence Murphy. This is that book that I was just talking about because I forgot to click on the tab. If you like sci-fi, if you've already done The Expanse, I'm not even going to talk about Red Rising. This is a really good series. Two books so far. Mm -hmm. Sometimes coffee is really good. Oh, thank you very much. Well, for Nikita, of course, he does not let me touch certain areas, and this was an area that he did not let me touch. So, 
there it is. Let's see, let's go this way now that we looked at that. But thank you very much. This next one. made me go what the what because you know i'm trying to find a vampire book to participate in storms vamp timber and i did not do well with bless your heart i i had to put it on pause but this one is a second book and so i have the, i just got the first book from the library which is called scarlet this i might have a chance with but this is book two elusive by genevieve cogman and she's familiar because she wrote the invisible library series in fantasy revolutionary france is full of blood and bite as vampires plot for power eleanor once a lowly english maid is now a member of the league of the scarlet pimpernel known for their daring deeds and rescuing aristocrat vampires from the guillotine Eleanor and the League are investigating the disappearance of Charles Maurice de Talleyrand, the notorious French statesman and diplomat. But they soon uncover two vampire parties feuding for power and learn that Talleyrand's disappearance is part of a bigger, more dangerous scheme, one that threatens to throw France into bloody chaos. I love Scarlet Pimpernel. I, am, I have a chance with this series. And I put it on hold, and just this morning it came up. which of course I have like three others that came up. So things are, it's a good problem to have, but it's a problem. Immortal Dark by Tigist Gurma. I apologize. I'm not saying that name right. Uh, this is first in an Immortal, Immortal Dark trilogy called Immortal Dark. Excuse me. Oh, it's another vampire. Uh, it is also a dark academia fantasy for those who are looking for that sub sub genre. It began long before my time, but something has always hunted our family. Orphaned heiress Kaiden Edain grew up far from the arcane society she was born into, where human bloodlines gain power through vampire companionship. When her sister June disappears, Kaiden is convinced a vampire stole her, the very vampire bound to their family, the cruel yet captivating Susinios Sagad. To find June, Kidman must infiltrate the elite Uxley University, where students study to ensure peaceful coexistence between humans and vampires and inherit their family legacies. Kaiden must survive living with Susinios even as he does everything he can to drive her away. It doesn't matter that Sasenio's wickedness speaks to Kidman's own, Kaiden's own violent nature and attempt and attempts to surrender to a life of darkness. She must find her sister and kill Sasenio's at all costs. When a murder mirroring June's disappearing sh shakes Uxley, Kaiden sinks further into the ruthless underworld of vampires, risking her very soul. There she discovers a century-old threat, and June could be the center of it. To save her sister, Kaiden must bring Uxley to its knees and either break free from the horrors of her own actions or embrace the dark entanglements of love and the blood it requires. Don't care for the cover. Hot Hex Boyfriend. This one could go under either romance or... Fantasy. We had a lot of romance. I put it under fantasy. This is by Carly Bloom. As a child, Delia Merriweather believed with all her heart that she was a witch because all Merriweather witches women were witches. There was just one problem. They had no magic. As an adult, Delia no longer believes magic even exists. However, when she accidentally breaks a hex and restores her family's powers, she's forced to accept a new reality. She is a witch. And maybe that's why the crushingly handsome next door guy next door has been looking at her like he's expecting her to fly off on a broomstick cackling into the night. 
Just when Max thinks he's done keeping an eye on the bumbling Merryweather women, now he must help his neighbors learn to control their magic before they out, which is everywhere. But Delia can't decide if Max is helping or hexing, and Max can't tell whether his growing feelings for Delia are real or if he's under the spell of the most powerful and clueless witch he's ever known. And the last thing Max needs is to fall for the one witch who could rule the entire witching world by controlling the hearts of men. Yes, we must control her. We are getting a lot of darker fantasy, I think, because we're getting into that season, that fall spooky season. Hi, Storm! It's a very vampire heavy year. It's why my friend wanted to. Ah, indeed. Did you see that I found one? I found one, and it just came up from the library. But I also have Solus out from the library. So, uh, Phantasma by Kaylee Smith, part of Wicked Games. When Ophelia and her sister discovers their mother brutally murdered, there is no time to grieve. Ophelia has inherited both her powerful death-driven magic and enormous debt on their home. Circumstances go from dire to deadly, however, when Ophelia's sister decides to pay off the loan by entering Phantasma, a competition... Of course there's a competition where most contestants don't make it out alive and the winner is granted a single wish. You know, Suzanne Collins should have just copyrighted the whole competition thing. She would be even richer than she probably is. The only way to save her sister to com is to compete, but Phantasma is a cursed manor with twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms and filled with enticing demons and fatal temptations. Ophelia will need to face nine floors of challenges to win if her fears don't overtake her first. When a charming, arrogant stranger claims he can protect and guide Ophelia, she knows she shouldn't trust him. While Blackwell may not seem dangerous, appearances can be deceptive. But with her sister's life on the line, Ophelia can't afford to turn him away. She just needs to ignore the overwhelming dark attraction drawing them closer and closer together. Because in Phantasma, the only thing deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart. Dot, 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 dot. I think these are all written by AI. Throw in a sister in danger so it's not just you. End of row one. Throw in a competition. Mix it up and throw in either Fae or a vampire. Throw in uh, Dark Academia. Throw in Enemies to Lovers. Boom. Book. Shadows of Pearl, second in the House of Marion series by J.L. J.L. Unleash the darkness. Claim your power. Quell Marion's Explosive final rite of induction to House Marion sent shockwaves through the magical world, unearthing long buried secrets and her own deadly power but she is paid she paid a steep price her family and her love fleeing chateau soleil for house of pearl for once quell is celebrated instead of shunned she has finally found somewhat somewhere to belong but secrets lurk in every house and quell's quest to find her mom threatens to lead her deeper into the shadows Assassin Jordan Wexton, second in command of the Dragoon Brotherhood, must protect the source of all magic, the Sphere. Yet the biggest threat to the Sphere is Quell Marion, the girl he loved, until she claimed the deadly outlaw Tushana. As the Sphere cracks and war brews among the houses, can the only, can the only way to save the world be to kill his own heart? Now these two lovers turn enemies. Oh, we flipped it. They're not lovers to enemies, they're enemies to lovers, they're lovers to enemies. Must confront their competing ambitions and conflicting loyalties. Or die. The future of magic hangs on their decision. And they all died at the end. The Cursed by Harper L. Woods. Second in the Coven of Bones. Betrayal. He was the deception waiting in the night, the truth I never saw coming. After a lifetime of manipulation, I finally learned the truth. I was his puppet, even if I never saw my strings. Even knowing how deep his betrayal runs, I can't shake the undeniable connection between Gray and I. The way a single glance from him sets my soul on fire. We are not the same. We're enemies 
poised to battle for the future of the very thing I'd wanted to destroy. With the covenant gone, the revenge I thought I wanted is no longer my priority. The witches that remain played no role in my aunt's death, and the only person standing in the way of righting those wrongs is the very man determined to keep me in his bed. But the remaining members of the coven will never forgive me for the role I played in their demise and subjugation, and the worst part of all is that I can't even blame them for it. I'd been naive, believing my own delusions of grandeur when destiny clearly had other plans for me, plans that had been set in motion centuries before my birth. But even that had been a lie, and now it is my duty to do everything in my power to undo it, to protect my coven from my husband's hatred, no matter the cost. Oh, so much angst. And if I were Gen Z, I'd be saying, I'm obsessed. Really, watch some booktube. They're all obsessed. The Monstrous Kind by Lydia Gregovic. Gregovic. Merrick Darling's life as daughter of the Manor Lord of Sussex is better than most. Sorry, coffee. Needed it. Unlike the commoners, she is immune to the toxic fog that encroached on England generations earlier. She will never become a phantom, one of the monstrous creatures that stalk her province's borders, and as long as the fires burn to hold them back, her safety is ensured. She wants for nothing, yet she will never inherit her family's manner. She must marry smartly or live at the kindness of her elder sister, Essie. Everything is turned on its head, though, when Merrick's father dies suddenly. Torn from her new London society life of ball gowns and parties, Merrick must travel back to her childhood home, the darling estate of Norland House, and what she finds there is bewildering. Once strong and capable, Essie is withdrawn and frightened, and with good cause. A recent string of attacks along the province's borders has turned their formerly bucolic countryside into a terrifying and unpredictable landscape. The fog is closing in and the fires aren't holding, which makes Merrick and Essie vulnerable in more ways than one. Because the phantoms are far from the only monsters in Merrick's world, and the other eleven manor lords are always watching for weakness. Revealing her and her sister's current state to the rest of the manors is out of the question, but when Essie goes missing, it's clear that Merrick needs help. Only... Who can she trust when everyone seems to be scheming and when all she holds true feels like it's slipping right out of her grasp? Mom, people, give me a good space opera. The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart, first in a new series, a new epic fantasy. A divine war shattered the world, leaving humanity in ruins. Desperate for hope, they struck a deal with the devious god, Clun. He would restore the world to its former glory. I like how there's two ends at the end. Like, it's, it helps. But at a price so steep, it would keep the mortals indebted to him for eternity. And as each land was transformed, so too were its people changed into strange new forms, if they survived at all. Akara is not willing to pay such a price. Desperate to protect herself and her sister, Rasha, she flees her homeland for the safety of a neighboring kingdom. But when tragedy separates them, Hakara is forced to abandon her beloved sister to an unknown fate. Alone, desperate for answers on the wrong side of the world, Hakara discovers she can channel the magic from the mysterious gems that are forced to they are forced to mine for Kloon. With that discovery comes another. Her sister is alive, and only the rebels plotting to destroy the God Pact can help rescue her. But only if Hakara goes to war against a god. End of that row. We're not going to make it. We're running out of time. The Game's God's Play by Abigail Owen, first in the Crucible series. The gods love to play with us mere mortals, and every hundred years we let them. I have never been favored by the gods, far from it, thanks to Zeus. Living as a cursed office clerk for the Order of Thieves, I just keep my head down and hope the capricious beings who rule from Olympus won't notice me. Not an easy feat, given San Francisco is Zeus's patron city, but I make do. I survive, until the night I tangle with a different god. The worst god, Hades. For the first time ever, the ruthless mercurial king of the underworld has entered the crucible, the deadly contest the gods hold to determine a new ruler to sit on the throne of Olympus. But instead of fighting their own battles, the gods name mortals to compete in their stead. 
So why in the underworld did Hades choose me, a sarcastic nobody with a curse on her shoulders, as his champion? And why does my heart trip every time he says I'm his? I don't know if I'm a pawn bait or something else entirely to this dangerously tempting God. How can I, when he has more secrets than stars in the sky? Because Hades is playing by his own rules, and death will win at any cost. Well, he is a god. Behind the Crimson Curtain by E.B. Golden, first in the Crimson Curtain series. On the cold-choked island of Lausanne, the tyrannical Stav regime breeds rebellion, but rebellion among the working class. Firin, a face-changing con artist trained by her domineering father, dances between fake lives to escape punishment for her crimes until armed rebels topple the regime. With freedom finally within her grasp, she discovers one of the heroes is her former lover, lover Bregan, who introduced her to her second love, the theater. As the flames of revolt settle, Firin joins Bregan on the stage. She's determined to create a life with the honorable man she never forgot. But like the past, love and truth are hard to hide, especially when one of Firin's victims, now president, chooses Bregan as his right-hand man. Haunted by the sacrifices of revolution and devoted to the new government success, Bregan quickly rises in its ranks. In a web of war and false identities, Firin must choose a side. But is the price of freedom her heart? Always. A Curse of Blood and Wolves. A steamy retelling, fairy tale reimagining of Little Red Riding Hood. Is it possible to be drawn to someone you've never met? When Ruby feels the eyes of a stranger in the woods, she knows she should be scared, that she should run away, but she can't. Instead, she feels a thrill, feels drawn to the stranger who follows her in the woods, yearns for his eyes on her every night as she walks home, hoping to hear the crunch of leaves under his feet that signals he's there. Will he ever reveal himself? After all, fate doesn't make mistakes. And this has five spicy peppers for the level. For the level of spiciness it doesn't quite say that it's erotic but it has five peppers be warned so we have run out of time we've got one two three four five six left so we will look at those tomorrow good morning elena how you doing oh you betcha glad to hear it and she says hello, and Amelia says hello. All right. Well, there's some interesting ones there. I personally found one that uh, a series I'm going to check out. So that's always a win. Is it always? It is because we're always looking for new books. <laughs> All right. So again, we do have sprints tonight, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. I do them three times a week, every Tuesday and Thursday evenings and Saturday afternoons. The ones on Saturday are for five hours. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, huzzah, and uh, it's Freeform Friday, so we'll look at the rest of those uh, fantasy sci-fi ones, and then any other books that are interesting that don't necessarily fall into the uh, set genres. Hope you have a very good day. Please take care of yourselves. Hope you're reading good books. Back at you, babies. Back at you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, so hopefully I'll see you later. Bring a friend. We'd love to grow. And as the banner says here, don't be a bookworm. Be a bookie monster. Om nom nom. Have a good day and God bless.